Welcome everyone, then to game number one in the series. So Sian versus Vileza with the Mayans and Chinese. Respectfully, we're gonna have on the left hand side Sebastian playing with the Mayans, and Vileza will be towards uh, south instead southeast slightly with the Chinese. Sponsored by Yilo and Nova, uh, it has to be in Ireland. Even the cans are different. Never mind the. How are you pronounce that word? <laughs> Now, now, now I'm uh, self-aware, you see? Damn it. Anyway. Or do you call it self-conscious? Well, regardless. Taking a look at the civilization's video. So with the Chinese, we'll begin with three extra villagers. One starting the game at the expense of... 200 food, 50 wood. We have an addition to that for the Chinese also. 10, 15, 20% cheaper upgrades in the Feudal Castle and Imperial Ages is going to have DCs with 5 extra line of sight and 5 higher population support while for the team bonus. We'll finally have for the Chinese 10% food, extra food on farms compared to other civilizations. Meanwhile, Sebastian playing with the Mayans, he will begin with one extra villager at the expense of 50 food. Besides that, we have for the Mayans also 15% longer lasting resources. 10, 20, and 30% cheaper archer units in the field of castle and imperial ages. Well, for the team bonus, we can have a 40% discount on walls, which is good. So, yeah, let's take a look at Pidas' map generation next. And this is a very interesting map. We're going to talk about it in just a moment, but there is a, a big hill separating both these players. And Vidas' map generation is going to be pretty standard for Arabia. Uh, some of these resources are going to be in the back, some are going to be forward. It's going to be easy to wall some areas, a little bit harder to wall some of the other areas, right? So we're going to see the main goal in the back, for instance. And then we're going to have the secondary goal up in the north. And the other secondary goal is going to be on the left-hand side. Both of these very far away from the DC, but the main goal in the back is uh, kind of exposed despite being in the back because how difficult it's going to be for him to wall the right-hand side, right? He would need to go for something like this. So yeah, in standard Arabia fashion, if you want to wall yourself in, you're going to have to make some sacrifices right it's going to be either very expensive walls or if you want to completely wall yourself in which would probably be cheaper for Vidas to go for something like this than to go for this wall right but it'd be harder for him to defend this area if he went for something like this he will be completely able to defend himself for for the for the stones for the golds two golds out of three anyway and a bunch of wood lines, but obviously very very difficult to defend the walls themselves and very pricey and time consuming to get uh, away with this well, so this is probably going to go just for standard resource walls. Meanwhile, taking a look at the map generation for Sebastian, on the other hand, we're going to see for the red player the main goal towards the southwest. It's got the secondary goal on the left hand side, and then we have the secondary goal in the northeast, mostly towards the east, with the main stone to the east and the secondary stone towards the northeast. Should be able to secure this. Very easily, just getting the walls from here to here and here to here. Once again, going for the walls around this area will make it difficult for Sebastian to defend those, but it's going to be cheaper, much cheaper compared to Vilesa's walls, right? And then if he gets the walls up over here, and he's already done that, and gets the, the walls up over here, it's going to be also pricey, but he will be able to secure both these colts, he'll be able to secure the berries, and he will be able to secure also the wool lines. So we'll see if he does end up going for it. It seems to me like he is certainly intending to do so. Anyway, there you go. It's looking good, for Mr. Vileza. Sebastian, so however, is bringing the militias. He plays his cards right, might be able to get a villager down. Let's take a look. He won't try to body block. No, no. There you go. Maybe let's just stabilize it, right? 
In the wall line, it's gonna be fine. Around the berries, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, and both players are going out to the fuelage, but Vilesa has got significant lead. There we go, Fuelage is here ready for Vileze. There you go. This has got the stable already on the way, meanwhile, up in the north. Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian loot is a villager to the scout. You can barely see it. But it's right there. Behind the wood. It's gonna be first blood. Yeah, actually, it's so hard to see it. It's gone by now. Wow, this is actually getting away with the damage that... Sebastian kind of hopes he was able to do. Oh my lord, you gotta be kidding me! Now it's going to be Gaia piling up also on Sebastian's villager. Notice how Vileze, he cannot take the engagement over here, but should be able to at the very least prevent the quick walls from coming up, right, for Sebastian. So that wolf almost takes the village down. You know what? You know what? It might actually be the case that the wall actually ends up taking the village down over here. Let's take a look. It gets the aggro at the last second, but it's going to try and target the villager one more time. And we see the bot the bot blocking from the other woman, but the villager goes down, and there is no way that Sebastian just lost the villager to the wall. And it was all because of Vilesa's aggression over here. Damn! What you call that sim maybe uh Symbiotic relationship between Vileza and Gaia. That was fantastic. Well done. Woof woof indeed. <laughs> well, that, that was not woof. That was just woof, but you gotta take it, right? Oh god, if things could go any rougher for Sebastian over here, I'd be surprised. Down the south. I mean, he gets cleaned up. I guess that's probably as... Rough as it can get for him, right? Wait. Doesn't have the forward military units anymore. Lost two villagers already. Will he install a bonsai tree mod? Bonsai tree? I didn't know there was a bonsai tree mod. Anyway. Fantastic. Yeah, so Ocean is not in the best position. Vilas is looking sharp himself. He is Getting the walls up finally, so he'll be completely walled off. Eventually. Probably still can get, indeed. For units he's going for right now, we'll get completely countered by Vilesa's next unit of choice, the skirmishers over here. But it's time not to go for skirmishers after scouts, and yeah, so we'll see on archers over here, the spear, they are just not going to be good enough. So Vilesa. Yes, this is a fantastic spot. Sebastian has been able, however, to get more food right now compared to Viles, and probably will be the first player to get enough resources to go out to the castle age, although to be fair, Viles's economy right now is not too bad at all. We can make a bonsai tree mod. Well, if you can do it, that'd be great. We could use it. One of the goals for this year, one of the goals of mine for this year is to make a tree mod that is going to kind of mix middle trees and small trees. So there is a little bit of an overlap between every tree type, but 
uh, you'll still be able to play with it. I have tried playing with middle trees, and you can do it. It's definitely easier than playing with the big trees. But it's not anywhere near as, you know, easy to target the individual trees as it is with, with small trees. So something in between the two would be fantastic, where the, the trees would still overlap, so they look like a forest. They will be a little bit easier to select individually as well. Right now, the way the middle trees is made is that the trees are 75% the size of the standard ones. Just uniformly, right? Just across the board. And I would like to make that like a different, you know, like a different size. Depending on the the, act, the individual tree sprite, you could have a different size. But yeah, anyway... Should be coming in in a moment. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I'm just coming now from Sebastian as well, but Vilas, eh? Vilas does already disrupt Sebastian's economy a little bit. I mean, if he cannot come in just yet, he can still roam around, try to push the villagers away from extra resources. That's what he's been able to do up until this point. And we see this, uh, the villagers getting pushed away from the berry bushes by the archers. The one archer, rather, we're probably going to see these villagers getting pushed away from the woodland, potentially from the archer as well. By the archer, rather. Not quite. So it's here now for both these guys. So see, yeah. he does have a little bit of a hit start to it. So he goes for crossman, blocking arrow already. He's got a see Trisha coming up in front of his base. Vilas, eh? And Vilas is going for elite skirmishes right now, blocking arrow as well. Bolso, but he is getting ahead significantly in economy even if the work count is about the same over here you gotta keep in mind that this is the only player who's gotten wheelbarrows so that's going to help and so far gallery economy time has favored Sebastian actually by a little bit and I would imagine that's probably because of the extra villager but of course in the you know the, the Mayan economy but Vilas eh? on the other hand is going to catch up in no time, actually. There we go, man. It's on the way now for Sebastian. What else can we expect from the bull player? He was going for scouts and skirmishers in the fuel age. The natural transition would be knights in elite skirmishers, right? And he's got the knight over here, and the Magnil does not land the shot against the skirmishers. But the knight cannot go and snipe the Magnal down with so many crossbows defending it. So Sebastian is fine for the time being. And the second Magnal is kind of instrumental over here. He was going for it though, but he cancelled it. He's going to try and get a second TC up instead. And prioritize that over the aggression. Well, it's not bad. He's going for crossbows, so it's not too difficult, right? For him to uh, keep the military production going while also going for economy. But he was not paying attention over here. And ended up losing the only man that he had. If he had two manos and if he was paying attention, it would have been significantly harder for Vidas to get any damage done over there. Now, it seems like it's a little bit too late, Sebastian. He's already surrounded in the siege workshop over here by knights, by skirmishers, of course. And even the mana from Vidas. Let's see. This could be really good for Vidas. No, it is. He's just keeping the mana! In motion, he gets the Magnal from Sebastian down. He does the only player left with the with the siege weapon over here. 
has actually two mana nails. Sebastian's Siege Workshop is taking a lot of heat over here. It's gonna be under pressure from two mana nails. Oh boy. There we are. Some good mana shots over here could very well end up reducing Sebastian's army by 50% or more, actually. And, oh, good shot. Good shot from Sebastian. Let's say we'll end up losing one of the mana nails. Not quite. He's going to bail, but that is a nice mana shot against crossbows. And here come the knights. He's got the skirmisher still. He's got the knights still. Could try. And take the mana nails down for the time being. It's not going to be the case, though. And Vidas will have to bail. Inevitably, if he wants to keep the mana nails alive. Yeah, and that was a, that was a good shot from Sebastian now. He's finally been able to stabilize. He's got two mana nails himself. He's got a villager to repair the mana nails with. And a good chunk of crossbows, so... The entire count is higher for Sebastian. Ah, oh, good shot from Vileza though. And good shot from Vileza as well. And POW! That is another great one! A lot of the crosses have gone down over there. Now the knights are coming over. There's not going to be enough crosses, I think. To guarantee the knights going down, even in the end, they do end up getting taken down. The vast majority of the crossbows have already gone down for Sebastian to the... Last couple of shots from Vidas's Vandals, and all of a sudden, well, the red player is gonna be down to 13 crossbows, down from like 30 or so, I think he had before. And Vidas is really good. He is one of the top players from his group. Sebastian, unfortunately, has been struggling. Sebastian might have come over to the Platinum League from the Gold League in the first season, I'm not really sure, because I, I did not cast that one. But I think that might actually have been the case. Nice mana shot from Sebastian getting one monk down, but he loses the mana nil, so not effective at all, not, not cost effective for him at all, not efficient. Yeah. See, Trishop goes down now. He does his. He can start putting more pressure even. Look at the score difference grew by like 300 points in 20 seconds there. Given the small kills, the armies. Yes! Yeah, the KD is going to inflate Vidas' score quite a lot. He's managed to keep up with villager production even. He's got three TCs back home as well. So it's not just going to be Sebastian, of course, and. That puts Vidas in a fantastic position, right? All of a sudden. Well, quote-unquote, all of a sudden, he's... We know what happened here exactly, right? But he finds himself 900 points ahead of Sebastian, and... With some good shots over here, that could be... Even a, a greater lead for Vidas. Yes, and these are recorded games. All today's series will be recorded games. Due to all of these sets... Haven't take uh, haven't taken place in the previous patch. There we are. Yeah, mango goes down. That's good. Vileze still in a world of his own though, playing a completely different game. Has been farm simulating back home and is gonna be on his way to the Imperial Age very soon. Well, Sebastian on the other hand has just been playing tower defense over here. Without the towers actually, just with units, I guess. Unit defense, maybe? Defense simulator. He's been playing uh, Spartan simulator here. <laughs> As Vileze kept on coming with more and more units. But yeah, it's... Just not good for Sebastian. He does this on his way to the Imperial Age, so we know what to expect, of course. He's playing with the Chinese, gonna get access to Arbalesters. Gonna get much stronger units available to him once he gets to the Imperial Age compared to Sebastian. And it seems to be like it pretty much doesn't matter what Vilesa goes for, so long as he takes advantage of Imperial Age upgrades, you know, namely Bracer, Chemistry. Even if he just goes for. even if he just sticks to Elite Skirmishers. Can go for trebuchets, right? Very soon it's gonna have enough to go for a castle. And trebuchets, elite skirmishers, or arbalesters, or 
Cavalier, like whatever he wants to go for, so long as he takes advantage of the Imperial, it's going to be so hard for Sebastian to deal with. And you can see just how much longer it's taken for the red player to flick out to the Imperial Age himself. We are. Here, it's finally on the way for Sebastian. Viles has got a significant head start to it. A minute and 13 seconds. Two minutes and 13 seconds, sorry. As a Chinese, he can make those machine bowmen. <laughs> yeah, potentially, right? He didn't manage to get enough stone to go for a castle before he had gotten to the Imperial Age, so we won't see any trebuchets come out. But it's not the only thing, of course, that he's gonna be able to get. He can go for pretty much anything he wants. He can go for onagers, he can go for cat tramps. Sea tramps. He's got the castle on the way though, so it seems to me like it's gonna be trebuchets. And especially now that there is already a castle up for Sebastian Villas, does not know about it yet. But if he keeps on chasing the crossbows, which keep on falling back towards the castle, then he's going to realize about this one. So once he gets the castle up, he's going to have to go for a trebuchet. There we go. Nice mango shot from Villas. And once again, Sebastian crumbles. And a little bit of a raid attempt over here from Sebastian gets cleaned up swiftly by Vilesen. And there we are! This is what I wanted to see. Vilesen notices the castle's up over here. And he should immediately go for a trophy himself. He's gotten the castle up already, so he was waiting for the resources. And he doesn't have the resources. He's going for conscription. Wow, it's just ignoring the castle. Well, he's gotten Cavalier. Play Wild and Armor is on the way. So Sian is just trying to play for our blisters quite clearly, and Vilas, well, Vilas has been going for a good amount of uh, skirmishers, right? So he's fine. Yeah, I thought Vilas was gonna try and prioritize the trebuchet so that he could take the defense down from So Sian right away. Now, as the red player makes a transition to the Imperial Age, we'll see the our blister upgrade coming, bracer, chemistry, and hand cards as well. Meanwhile, Vilas, he was on a higher village account with. Stronger eco upgrades as well for a while longer, so gather economy time favors Vilesa by a lot. For an hour and a half of extra gather economy time for Vilesa compared to Sebastian. And here comes the bull player going right at the TC with the Mammonel, with the Knights, the Cavalier right now, I should say. He's taking the TC down extremely quickly. We have some villagers over there, you won't be able to chase those away because of the Arbalisters, but TC is going down. He's gonna be left on two TCs, two castles, Vileza. He's got three TCs, one castle. Very soon, he's gonna have two castles as well, so he's got the resource for it. And the question becomes then, where will Vileza go for the second castle? Where will we see it? Well, he could go for the castle forward around here so that he can push. You know, the red player away from the gold. There's a possibility for that. Alternatively, we take a look at the resource view. Oh, okay, he's going to go for a defensive one to secure extra gold for himself. That's good. He already has the military units over here, so he wouldn't really need a castle, honestly. Um, which is why I want to take a look at the resource view to see where else Sebastian might collect resources from next. After getting pushed away from here by the units, naturally, from Bidesen. Turns out that he's got just two golds left. Two actual tiles of gold left. This one at 60 gold, so it's about to run out. This one at 300 gold, so it's going to run out very quickly as well. And without getting access to this gold, it seems like Sebastian's going to be out of luck, right? The only extra gold he could potentially take from would be that one on the right-hand side, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be possible anymore. He calls a GG as we let his raid. Comes in way too strong for Sebastian to hold on against. That's going to be 1-0 in favor of Vileze. Maybe taking a little bit longer than I was anticipating the, the games to take over here, but... Yeah, from very early on, Vileza has been dominating the game. Better than 4 to 3 KD ratio for Vileze. Economy, 
Stronger economy for Villas. I collected about 6,000 extra resources. Society? Stronger society stats for Sebastian with a higher villager max count. However, he was the one to lose the most villagers, right? With 16 villagers going down throughout the game. 26 villagers, sorry, going down throughout the game. Meanwhile, uh, Villas did not lose a single villager at all. Sebastian is, is natural for the Uruguayan players. Going to have a higher APM compared to his opponent, but it did not really make much of a difference. In the end, it's not about speed ride, right? but rather what you do with it. So let's go back. Game number two is here, everyone. Welcome, Sebastian versus Vileze. We'll play her down the south. Vileze are playing with the Incas. We'll be facing a red player up in the north. Sebastian playing with the Huns. For Vileze Civilization, the Incas will get Villagers that get affected by blacksmith upgrades started in the castle age. We're going to have an addition to that, a 15% stone discount on buildings. In addition to one free lama upon starting the game, available underneath the TC, right? You can see that uh, he's collecting from it already. And on top of that, the Incas will also have... Uh, what is the, the other bonus? I cannot recall it right now. I'm going to have to actually take a look at the tech tree. Ah! How... Oh. How embarrassing. Yeah, for the, the Incas, the final bonus is going to be the House of Sport 10 population. Yeah. I was probably going to recall it, but it was going to take a while. Team bonus, on the other hand, has changed for them. From the farms going up faster to Spearman and Skirmisher line units getting two extra line of sight. Also, we'll see on the other hand with the Hans. It's going to have 10 and 20% cheaper cavalry archer units in the castle in, in Imperial Ages. 50% accuracy on trebuchets as opposed to 15. It's gonna get also with the Hans 200 population at the beginning of the game, 200 population support at the beginning of the game at the expense of 100 wood. And for the team bonus, he does have 20% faster working stables. So, what do we expect from the Hans over here? It's going to be either knights or cavalry archers. That's just the way that the Hans roll usually. And on a map like this, we have oftentimes seen cavalry archers more frequently than just knights, right? Than standard melee cavalry. So there's that. Vileze. Oh. There we are. Vileze. Let's take a look at his map generation. He's going to have the mingle very close to the TC. And he's got the TC kind of close to the corner of the map, so this is not going to be necessarily a corner spot, but it's going to be close enough to the corner that he should be able to get the walls from here to here, perhaps, and then just connect the walls to the wall lines like so, and then to the edge of the map. Such a way that he will be able to secure one gold, two stones, as a matter of fact, two golds too with this one, and then the main goal is going to be kind of exposed in a sense, and he wouldn't be able to secure a single wool line, but he will be able to secure the entire pond. That is fantastic. Moving out to the north, we'll see that Sebastian, he's got the main goal on the back, right? So that's good. Should be able to secure this one. And he does have a corner spawn over here, like he's immediately next to the pond with a TC, which means going for some walls from here to here, and then from here to here, here to here are going to be very cheap for him to go for. And he will be able to, to secure the mingle on the back. He'll be able to secure the stone over here on the left hand side as well. But unfortunately, he wouldn't be able to secure any wood lines. However, similarly to Vilesa, he will be able to secure the entire pond on the back. So both players, I would say somewhat comparable map generation. Even though Vilesa does get two goals that he could potentially, potentially secure. Uh, those are going to be secondary goals and... Because it's 4 plus 2 tiles, it's going to be 6 tiles total. Meanwhile, the 1 goal from Sebastian is going to be larger than both goals combined from Vileza, right? The ones that they have on the back because of the 7 tiles that Sebastian's main goal is going to have. So yeah, I think I'm... I'm finding the map generation pretty similar. Although it seems like Sebastian's going to have an easier time walling himself in. Should be cheaper anyway. Regardless though... Well, you start getting up to go up to the fuel HMV, let's say. This is going to be the first one to click up. Sebastian. Sebastian could try to make a play for a fast castle over here, but he won't. He's just going to go for Loom right now, which indicates... Standard... 
few little time. And we'll see, we'll see what we get. Beautiful. So Sian's going up to the fuel age himself as well. We have a head start for Villas to it. Should be about 24 seconds or so. Has this map been changed to have the player spawn up and down instead of between the lakes? No, uh, it's possible to get either spawn position. You can have the players closer to the lakes and kind of in the corner, or you can have the players spawn in between the lakes. It's possible to get either one. Continue control for Vilese. He wasn't able to get the village down, but he did chunk a lot of HP off this one. And he does bring a bunch of four villagers, so Vilese is push over here. Remember, the Incas, they get a 15% stone discount. Back in the day, their villagers would be affected by melee upgrades from the blacksmith. By infantry upgrades, sorry, from the blacksmith from the field age, not from the castle age, so it was very common to see the Inca Trush. But these days, it's not quite as common anymore. It makes me wonder, is Vilesa gonna try to go for that? What is the plan over here? No, it is! A good unit control from Vilesa as well, drawing attention from the units away from the villagers so that he's able to get the quick walls up. Now he gets the archer range up, and the two remaining villagers will go for the tower on the right-hand side! That is a beautiful location for one. This tower, simple put. We'll push the villagers away from this wood. Here we go. Sebastian doesn't really have an alternative wood lane right now. He's gonna have to go for another lumber camp elsewhere. Damn, you does it? This is getting away with murder here. This guy of the village is alive still. He's got the archers coming out, so he should be able to take care of these men at arms. That's not losing the, the spearmen though, but yeah, with the archers once again, should be able to take care of the men at arms. Not like this though! Not the best path thing. For Videze. Yeah, and the archers are going down. Well done, well done. So Sienna's defending really well over here. Up in the north. A defense tower comes up from Sebastian as well. He does not want to go into a different wall line, so he's just gonna try to clean this one up. But of course, so long as Vidas does not garrison any villages inside this one, Sebastian should come out on top. And you know what? Vidas' game is not going the best over here. He's lost one villager already. He is getting pushed away from Sebastian's base. He is falling behind in population overall, both for economy and for military population. Sebastian's so Minotaur play over here is starting to look a lot stronger. Might be able to get the tower down over here before it even comes up. He has to resume construction. There he goes. The walls finally come out for Sebastian as well. And it is actually, yeah, similar to what I was expecting to see. He could have tried to connect the walls. Um, using both these forests, right? And that would allow them to secure the forest up in the north, which, given the pressure from Vileza, would have come in handy, I guess. But at this point, Sebastian has already been able to stabilize the situation back home, so I think it's fine. Yeah. Sebastian is looking absolutely fantastic over here compared to game number one anyway this is night and day where game number two is day of course for him 
Skirmish is coming over. The economy is looking good. And Vileze is still behind by about three workers. I would certainly not give Vileze for dead over here whatsoever. But Sebastian definitely has gotten some momentum over here that could potentially allow him to take game number two. We'll see. Here we go. So Sian gets pushed away. Back home. He's got the defenses against Vilesa. So Vilesa is unlikely to achieve too much of anything over here. He's going for extra skirmishers though. Well, you know, if he had garrisons right now, he should be able to take both these skirmishers down and then potentially just push Sebastian away from the berries. He's got a good amount of skirmishers back home as well. Sebastian is catching up, guys. He's catching up. Not in actual numbers yet, but. Check this out! He did go for it! He out garrisoned the skirmishers, right? So, he's taking the ones from Sebastian down. Now he's trying to go on the hill to try and get the scout down over here, but that's not gonna be good. He's going after... He's going towards the barracks, right? So that he can get the spearmen out. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Sebastian is paying attention, though, so he won't lose any of the scouts. And he's bringing the rest of the units back to defend himself against this. But yeah, once again, it's fine. Vileze is kind of catching up over here. Not in numbers yet. But he's gone for wheelbarrow. That's going to help his economy. And the longer the game goes, of course, uh, three or so villager lead that Sebastian had managed to get up until that point. Now it's going to be higher because of wheelbarrow. But the three or so villager lead that Sebastian had managed to get up until this point is going to get less and less significant as the game goes on. In the castle is gonna be on the way for both these guys. And the castle is on the way. We do have a little bit of a head start for Vileza, but it's insignificant. It's negligible right now. Only three seconds faster. Castle H time and Sebastian. Well, Sebastian still has a significantly stronger economy. He's the only player who's tried to go after the, the extra pawns. Well, I shouldn't say that. Vilesa does have a dock on the right-hand side. This is fairly recent from both these players. They've been focusing for the most part on land, which is certainly a departure from what's been standard on this game, on, on this map. But yeah, we have a, a dock already up on the right-hand side for both these guys. Whoever realizes about the other guy first is going to have a huge lead over here. It seems like Vilesa is actually bringing units over, isn't he? Uh, Sebastian sorry, is bringing new units over. Well, he did have the scouts, but just gonna try and get some damage over here instead. It might actually be able to get away with it. It's gotta be careful though. Good unit control for Vileze. But yeah, yeah, there we go. Sebastian needs to try and get some scouting done over here. On the left hand side, he already sent the fish ship over to the left to get vision of the shoreline. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, he doesn't really know what's there. He knows that there is nothing from Vileze. And he's making the assumption that if it's not Vileze to go for a dock over here towards the closer shore to his base, and he's not there at all. But little does he know, actually, that Vileze has gone for a dock actually towards the north. And on the left-hand side, so Sian's probably going to end up in the village over here, but both players get to the castle H already, and what to expect? We're gonna see knights coming out from Sebastian. He's got two stable. He's got the third stable on the way as well as the monastery too. So Sian does find himself in a very good position. To put pressure with as we see Vileze. Vileze is going for the monastery right now. He's got three barracks. And the guys. Okay, Vileza is aware now of the fishing ships from Sebastian. Sebastian is not aware of the fishing ships from Vileze. 
And that's gotta be just so painful. Vilas is going to end up coming out on top over here. <laughs> However, here come the knights. Well, it's not actually knights. It's just two minotaurs and skirmishers. The so TC's garrisoned with three villagers only. Which is actually very funny to see from Sebastian. He's kind of denying the TC over there, actually. Uh, idle in the TC or idle in the, the, the economy around the TC with VLA units, right? But here come the knights. These are going to be significantly more threatening from Sebastian. He needs to keep production high, so he needs to stick to one TC. Even if he ends up getting pushed away from here, it does not matter. He cannot go and try to contest the water over here. If he's going to go, this is a mistake in my opinion. If he's going to go for a land push with triple stable production, he knows that he's up against the Incas who will want to go for full uh, Eagle production, which is going to be much cheaper. He needs to try and prioritize the land. He already has two pawns. He already has a lot of fish and ships. Just go for full food, full gold. Try to get the knights up and, and just take this one in. It's looking stronger right now, much stronger compared to Viles. He's taking villagers down now with a Maganel, the Four Siege Workshop. Sebastian is already doing work. This tower takes damage over here. The monk's going to get ejected. We still have a lot of knights around. Sebastian, he needs to keep the pressure up. And he is going to. He's got right now chain bar the number already. So that's the best thing he can do in terms of giving the knights endurance. Against defense is from Vileza and Vileza. Vileza is trying to go for the conversions right now. Sebastian, way too late to try and turn around and walk away. We'll go towards the monks. He will get all four monks down. Three out of four, actually. As Vileza manages to garrison one of the monks over here, but one of the knights did get converted. Two of the knights got converted, but three monks going down. And the other one inside the TC, it's not good enough for Vileza, and he knows it. He knows it so much that he goes on to call the GG. And this will give Sebastian probably the most significant victory of the group stage so far for the Uruguayan player. Not because of the standings, it's not going to change anything. Sebastian is getting demoted no matter what. But taking a game from Bileze is, in and of itself, uh, a nice accomplishment over here for Sebastian. So it's going to be one-to-one. -one. And game number three is going to define who wins the series. So let's go through the achievements first and let's take a look at what we get. Well, for military, we're going to have a stronger KD for Sebastian by a lot. Better than 5 to 3. Hey, Cliffy. Hi, hi. Welcome. For economy, we have a stronger economy for Sebastian as well. Collecting about 3,300 extra resources. For society, a stronger villager max count for Sebastian. He was the one to lose a few villagers too, with three villagers going down throughout the game. Four fish and ships going down throughout the game. Still on a higher total fish and ship count compared to Vileza. We did see on the other hand that was in 12 villagers, and that's going to be about it. Let's go back and uh yeah, let's see what we get for game number three. Beautiful. Welcome everyone then to the final game of the series. We're gonna see for Vileza the Bengalis. We're gonna see for Sebastian the Turks. Vileza with the Bengalis is going to get plus 3, plus 3 armor on monk units. It's going to have 25%. Elephant units will take 25% less bonus damage. They're going to have conversion resistance. And then on top of that, for Bengalis, we also have two additional villagers spawning from each TC every time that he goes up to the next stage. While for Sebastian, on the other hand, with the Turks, it's going to have a mirror of bonuses with 25% faster working gold miners being the first of those. He's going to have also 25% higher HP on gunpowder units. The Lycauri and Hazar upgrades come in for free and they do get one extra Pierce armor. In addition to that, we also have free chemistry with a 50% discount on gunpowder upgrades. Finally, the, the last bonus for Sebastian Civilization, the team bonus will be 25% faster training gunpowder units. Map generation next, and taking a look at Vilesa's map generation first, what do we get? We're gonna have the main goal on the back. Secondary goal on the back. We have the main stone forward, kind of exposed in a way that could potentially get spotted by scouts from outside the walls. And then the secondary goal, the secondary stone that we are missing, those are going to be outside the walls as it's 
the case, right? Usually. While Sebastian, on the other hand, will he's gonna get the red player. The main goal on the back, which is beautiful. Secondary goal on the back as well, and it's gonna be the main stun that he's got for. So very similar map generation for both these guys. I guess the one difference is that Vidas does have his stone close to the walls in front, but not in a way that's going to be easy for Sebastian to deny multiple resources with a single fortification, right? While on the left-hand side over here, the forward stone from, Vida, from Sebastian could actually end up getting the knight in conjunction with this one as well. He does have a secondary stone outside the walls, very close to the main one. Secondary goal, finally, is going to be outside the walls, but towards the south. And this is all just very hypothetical, of course. This is not to say that we are going to see anybody go for a forecastle from the get-go, right? But eventually, when the players start contesting the map, when the players start putting pressure, whoever goes forward first is going to... is going to have the possibility of denying some resources. I, I guess... Technically, we could see Sebastian denying two resources from Sebastian with a single fortification, right? Just not one from inside the walls. If the red player would go for a castle, he would be able to go for the castle over here, which would allow him to deny both the goal and the stone. If the bull player were to go for a castle himself, then he would be able to go for one over here, which would end up denying, of course, both these stones. Now, it's probably better for, for Vidaza. So it's good to have some access to everything. But to have more access to one thing and none, none of the other. Final thing to take a look at, though, is the relic distribution. And this will see one relic closer to Vidlas' base up in the north. We're going to have another relic. This one is going to be contested, though. So we're going to make it great. And uh, then this one is going to be contested too, kind of closer to the bull player, mind you. But then we have two relics closer to Sebastian's side of the map by a lot. If you had to choose two flanks and two pockets for a team on 44, who would you choose? Pocket, mm, Doubt and the Max, Flank, Tato, and Lix. So I imagine I get to choose like anybody in the whole world, right? You can't come up with more people than that. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Yo would also be a fantastic option for a pocket player. But the first two that come to mind would be Doubt and, and the Max. Well, maybe these days, I would maybe swap the Max for Mr. Yo, because I'm not really sure the Max is in a particularly good shape. I don't think he's been playing for a for a while, right? So I, I, I do regard the Max as one of the highest level pocket players of all time as well, but I just don't know what his current state is. But yeah, I guess if you can also choose from any point in time, I could say that, yeah, a couple years ago, uh, the max run a couple years ago for Pocket. <laughs> and Doubt, Doubt, yeah, that, that's fine right now as well. So saying current Doubt seems good to me. Current Doubt, current Tato, current Lix. Uh, max run a couple years ago, otherwise current Mr. Yo. Village is on the way for both these guys. We'll see both. Try to fast castle, of course. It's gonna be the case in this map more often than not. In this tournament. Village is here for Vidase. Nice. Okay. 
Guess they should be on the way very soon, Sebastian. Sebastian will be on his way to the Castle Age very soon as well. He'll make a transition to stone afterwards. Is he actually? Hold on. He's got the resource to go up to the Castle Age already. He actually went with a little bit too strong of an economy. He's gonna try and make a play for the for the relics. Yeah, he won't actually go for, for stone at all. No, he's not going to play for for Janissaries, no, it's just going to be the extra TCs and he'll play for the economy. Meanwhile, Vileze, well, we know that Vileze should be playing for the economy as well, right? He's playing Bengalis over here, he wants to play the late game. Yeah, yeah. He wants to make a play for full elephant archers, I would imagine. And it's been uh, catching on, right? It's interesting to see, in any case. It doesn't mean that because you have Bengalis that you're going to make a play for Elf of Archers, even if that's what I go to. It's my default go-to strat over here, in the sense that it's what I'm anticipating the players to go for, but we already saw players such as Stout, for instance, who would not make the play for Elephant Archers. Instead, would go for something else. Skirmishers, namely. Traps, monks. I guess time will tell. What we'll get over here. By the way, hello, Ozlot. Welcome back as well. Long time no siege, I think. As he gets to the castle age first, Sebastian. Yeah, only a few seconds away from it. Not too much of a head start for Vilesa to it, and I don't see the extra TCs. He's going for the monastery first, he's going to prioritize that. And he does have the second TC coming out, third TC is gonna have to wait a little bit. Remember, plus three, plus three armor on Bengali's monks. Remember as well, we even saw, we, we still saw even Scout Cavalry in the previous series take the Bengali Splunk down without getting converted, so extra armor is not going to guarantee you getting conversions, of course, and Sebastian is going to have Light Cavalry right now for free because of the Turk bonus. So you gotta respect still these units from the red player. Will it be casting Nations Cup? I don't think I'm going to be casting a whole lot of Nations Cup, probably the latest stages, most likely. It all depends on on the time. It all depends on the on the schedule, right? And the the time demands for for each tournament and whatnot. TTL has actually been kind of one of the more involved tournaments that I've been casting in in a while. Like we have a lot of series right during the group stage. Even though the, the series are somewhat short because they have so many series in a single day, they, the, the streams are actually pretty long. Um, once this is over, once TTL is over, I think we might be in a position once again to to start casting probably like more than one tournament at a time, right? Most likely. Anyway, conversions are coming up. They are not connecting though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sebastian, Sebastian is still looking the stronger for Light Cavalry Count. He's been the only player collecting the relics so far, but there is one relic coming in right now from Bidesa, so it's going to be Chichuan in favor of Sebastian. Down the south. See so the two remaining relics. Players are gonna be fighting for, and that's a nice conversion coming in from Sebastian. And the light guard here coming over those. The Sebastian's monks going to crumble right away. Meanwhile, Vilesa's monks should crumble over here as well. Yes, sir. Once again, extra armor will allow him to survive one extra hit. 
gains light cavalry, but they will still go down. And who will end up collecting? The final relics? Well, so Lucian is going after this one. So that's going to be the third relic in favor of the Uruguayan player. And Vileze, Vileze has got the monk on the way. Already to try and collect the final relic down the south. Should be able to get it. It's very close to his walls, right? So it shouldn't be too contested. And he will get it in the end. Sebastian's cow play over here still allowed him to get three out of five relics. Which is fantastic. To be fair, we noticed that Vidas only had one relic that was closer to his base compared to Sebastian. And Sebastian had two. So uh, Sebastian ended up collecting the two relics that he had, let's say, almost guaranteed. Well, the fifth, series, the, the, the fifth relic in the end. Uh, or the third relic that he collected was one of the neutral ones. Yeah, and this made possible because of the chart bonus. Regardless though, the game stabilizes right now. Vilese was the first player to get the extra TC sub. He's been able to get ahead in work count by a lot. He's going for wheelbarrow as is Sebastian. Yeah. Elephant Archers? I'm certainly hoping to see the Elephant Archers from Vileze. That is what I'm hoping to see every time that we see Bengalis on Arena now, because of how great it's been so far, but... It's not always been strong enough, and... It's not always been the winning strategy of choice for the Bengalis either, so... I guess you never know, we're gonna have to wait and see what exactly it is that Vilas is gonna try to go for. He's got eight stone miners right now. There we go. Now, overall, the game has stabilized right now, so it seems like we're just gonna have to wait for the Imperial Ages. It's on the way for Sebastian, Vilas is getting very close to it himself. Conversion's coming in for Vileze. He's going out to the Imperial Age next. We have a nice head start for Sebastian. Not a full minute, but it's still going to be about 45 seconds of a head start to it. What will that give him though? Right now it's just going for houses and I don't see any extra stables to go for Hazar. I don't see uh, the potential for camels over here for Sebastian either. He is collecting stones, so it seems like we're going to get some form of Janissaries, right? So it seems like we're going to have Janissaries in to some degree. What else? Bar cannons? Full gunpowder, well, Vilese. Vilese's base, on the other hand, seems to be a little bit more revealing than Sebastian. He does have a second archer range coming out, so we know it's going to be uh, skirmishers or elephant archers. Because on the way for him as well, he needs it for trebuchets. Conscription as well, especially if he wants to go for elephant archers, production is absolutely paramount anyway village here already for Sosian yes sir and what do we see once he gets there? Bombard cannons should be on the way. Hand cannoneer are going to be on the way. It's not Janissaries. Hand cannoneer will be the next closest thing, of course. How many archer ranges do we have? Five archer ranges. That is very nice. 
Vila's on the other hand is about to get to the Imperial Age himself. He's got on the castle up. And he's got an extra arch range on the way. Just three. However, for Vileze. It kind of seems like it's going to be Elephant Archers, right? Elephant Archers versus Hand Cannon. You remember our cannons? Certainly not what I was expecting. Does it was Sian know what to expect from Vileze? Eh? Because if he's just going for Hand Cannon here to try and fight the Pikeman off. Well, that is not what he's going to be fighting for the most part, so... Yeah, it doesn't seem like the right way to go about it, in my opinion. The Bombarkans will be good, though, if he can get the castle down over here. That'd be amazing. And Vilese, he's going for the chunkers, guys! Yes, sir! Six elephant archers on the way. Conscription is coming up. For the Wool player as well. There we are. We have the Junkers! Yes, sir! Relics go down right away from Ileze. The Monastery goes down right and... Yeah, of course Scouts won't do anything against Hand Cannon in these numbers. The guys are slow, sh uh, slow shooting, but... They do pack a punch. And here come the Elephant Archers! Notice Vilez is coming in! Quickly! And he gets immediately pushed back. But the Mubarak Cannon, so we have Leather Archer Armor. We have Parth and Tactics for Vileze. Sebastian. Sebastian will get the castle down. Plays his cards right. There we go, that's a, that's a, that's a big looking elephant archer army, but in actual numbers, in reality, is not too big. And this might be a little bit of an issue for Bileze if he's not careful, because you can uh, end up kind of overestimating your, or your own army. And this has been the case for, for Bengalis, not only for elephant archers, but also even for Rathas. So just gotta make sure that he actually does have a good amount of units. Before he goes forward and tries to engage, right? Right now he's got 13 elephant archers. It's gonna be facing 26. Hand cannoneer. Some monks over here. The conversions can still be catastrophic for Vileze. And there's a forecast coming up for Sebastian. We have artillery coming in for Sebastian. Two extra range on the bombard cannons. Vileze had just gone for pikes a moment ago. So that's going to make these guys attack 20% faster. And that makes a big difference. The bombard cannons can still... Make a big difference over here as well. Taking on the elephants over there. We're going to see the conversions come out. One of the conversions is going to connect for sure. And then the monks going down for the most part. Well, some of these are. Some are still up. But it seems like unit control for Sebastian has not been the best. He's not tried to target the remaining units. Now with the castle up. And the monks over there. And the hand cannon here still. The elephant archers can't push back. Vileza's army gets suppressed. And now... Sebastian, he's got the chance. He's got the chance to come forward. He's got the chance to punish Vilas. He's got the chance of potentially taking the game over here. If he can take the game, that's going to be a first win for Sebastian, I think. If I'm not mistaken, it against one of the strongest players of the group. Sebastian, that'll be the way to go with a bang. Quite literally as well. Sebastian's got a lot of bombard cannons to work. Plenty of stone left for Sebastian, yes. He's got to take the trebuchets over here. The castle will crumble. He takes one. Got a little bit too close to the sun over there, but he does end up taking another one down. The elephant still will keep on taking more and more damage. And Sebastian, he's keeping the castle up. Unbelievable. Hand cannon here and bombard cannons against the elephant archer. It's working out really well. Well... For now, anyway, how many hand cannoneers do we have left? About 19. How many elephant archers? These are elite right now and fully upgraded. So the numbers are getting closer and Vilesa seems to be... Turning the table over here a little bit. Sebastian's production is dwindling a, a, a little also and... I'd probably like to see 
Oh yeah, not fully upgraded. He's got some upgrades coming in still. Regardless, very, very strong units over here. Extremely tanky, very high stats over here. Plus four attack already, fantastic. And Sebastian would probably benefit from going for a few Janissaries over here in addition to the Hand Cannoneer, I would imagine. If not just for production potential, right? I think he's still in the same amount of archer ranges he's been on since the very beginning. Yeah, five, cardio, uh, five uh, archer ranges over here. But yeah. As we just stated, he has gotten pikes just a minute ago, yes. So he's got that. He's got Bracer, he's got Chemistry. He's got Parthen Tactics, Ring Archer Armor. In addition to Husbandry. Bloodlines. And... Yeah. These elephants are certainly a... Force to be reckoned with and Sebastian. Does in the end... End up getting overrun over here. That was an interesting game for sure. And yeah, to, to think that just a moment ago, it was the hand cannon here that were looking so strong against the elephant archers, right? And, and then slowly but surely, the engagement. Yeah, favored. Be lazy. All right, well done. Let's take a look at the achievements. See what we get, and that's going to be a 9 to 5 kill ratio for Vileza, for economy. Stronger economy for Vileza as well, collecting about 8,000 extra resources. Stronger society as well for Vileza. Uh, right at the end of the game, he was the player to lose the fewest villagers, lost only one villager throughout the game, was on a final villager count of 140. Even if Sebastian got a little bit of a higher villager max count, he did produce more villagers, of which he lost a lot more compared to Vileza. That was so close though, for a moment it really seemed as if Sebastian was starting to pick up some steam and in the end was able to come back over here, well done. Let's go back and see what we get for the standings. So this is what Group D was looking like before the series began. I'm going to refresh this, I don't think this is updated yet. But just in case, let's do it. And. Oh, it, it did get updated already. Never mind. Vileze. Well, Vileze is guaranteed to make it into the round of 12. Tato's got one more set left to go. And Sebastian, well, Sebastian is getting demoted. He's lost all five series he's played. But of course, there is obviously the chance for Sebastian to use this as a learning opportunity, as a chance for growth, right? Playing five series against these absolute fantastic players is not something that you can just do by queuing up randomly. And especially in tournaments where the games are going to be higher stakes and they are going to be taken more seriously, right? I'm pretty sure Sebastian is going to have plenty of material to go through to analyze his games during the group stage and to hopefully grow from it. So, 